Hi everyone, my name is Fira Mulyani. I'm bringing the hot topic of our time today, artificial intelligence in design tool. Some hate it, some love it, and some use it smartly as a feedback loop to their imaginary vision and creativity. Now we are interested in those who are using it as a process to increase their creativity and be more intelligent than the AI itself. This is one of the first interviews we have, and there will be many more. Enjoy it, and I hope this can help you in your journey to designing the future. Our first guest is Tim Fu. My name is Tim Fu. I am a London-based Canadian architectural designer. I currently work in Zaha D Architects in London, UK. So they're working for one and a half years. And um, before that, I worked in uh, at IJP Architects in London as well for two years. I graduated as well from the Architectural Association in London, where we studied on research biomimetics and material systems of architecture and application to architectural design and digital fabrication. So throughout my um, academic and professional career, I've been focused on the technological aspect and the digital and computational aspects of architectural design. The more uh, recent work that I've done are specifically based on the AI technology that has been released recently through DALI 2 and Midjourney. These uh, AI text prompting to image software allows you to create very quick ideas and concepts through crafting the initial prompt inputs. With this new technology, I've been just doing my research and seeing how we can create architecturally feasible concepts that can be uh, then utilized to then fabricate and go through the standard process of architectural production. So that's mostly what I've been oriented on doing recently on my own side. In the office, we work as Ahadid Architects we do a lot of also research-oriented work because I work in Zahadid code cluster. So that's the technological cluster of uh, Zahadid Architects. We specialize in research on parametric design and material systems and a geometric uh, rationalization. Uh, half the time I'm working on that type of work and the other half the time I'm just doing my own private research and trying to output interesting concepts that, that you can see on Instagram, for example. Okay, so I think the first thing I could probably talk about is my process of going from the direct output of the text to image type of software, AI software, and how I change it into a more um, tuned in concept. Uh, so, so here is like one project. And so for example, the, the mid journey output um, provides something that's like this. And a lot of the times uh, we do a lot of evolving and iterative work to see if it can, we can direct the AI towards something feasible and it's never perfect, but it gets to a certain point where you're like, okay, I can take and work with this. So this is the result of the output. And I said that, okay, here I can use other ways to fix it. Uh, so mid journey is the AI that's more, I would say artistic. Once it produces this output, then we move on to, um, DALI 2, which is the other software, um, that's kind of rivaling mid journey right now. And they're slightly less artistic, but what they can do is focus on certain areas and just fix those. So if you compare the first image to the second one, like the trees here, that's not, it's where it's not supposed to be, as well as the base and the curvature of the window mullions uh, have been fixed by DALI. So it's able to just understand that it should be something more simpler and Cleaner, and it manages to do that. And you, you will aid it as well with the text prompt. So DALI is able to fix that with a level of photorealism that will then synthesize into the original image. And, and from there on, um, other things I do is through post-processing and 
basically using Photoshop to fix minor details. You give the final touch to whatever you desire and you fix things that um, the AI cannot fix or you try to fix, but it's never quite there. So it's a good way to just finalize and finish up there. So that um, is just an example of the process going from the different AIs. Um, I can also show how I managed to do the evolving, you know, and the text prompting, because I think that's probably quite interesting as well. Have you ever had any results that you're like, wow, this is like mind blowing. I have to build the 3D out of this. Yeah, I have built 3D out of some stuff. I have one queuing up as well. So for example, a while ago, I did this one. I call it the House of Tulips. It's the halfway between a bouquet of flowers and an apartment building complex. So I thought this is quite suitable to deploy parametric design to realize this project. So then what I did was try to actually do it through parametric design, like what I typically do. Here's the video. I also did a TikTok of this. So you can see here that um, it's pretty much all like using the visual scripting to drive a mathematical logic to then basically geometrically uh, manipulate collectively the series of flowers and the building background so that you see then we can fine tune using um, using graphs and mathematical algorithms. And it's a lot quicker because then you can apply it to it all despite its shape is quite different. And yeah, this is one of the first projects that I've done. That I, The concept itself is from the AI, but the 3D model is um, an actually modeled 3D in Rhino. Yeah, so that's an example. What might be of interest is to talk about the evolving process because a big part of the AI creation is one of them is text prompting is selecting the right words and it's very sensitive to to the words and how many spaces there are and the grammar and everything is like you add one word and sometimes it changes everything so I tend to do this process very slowly so that um, I understand um, step by step when I'm adding the words, so what type of uh, visual results it gives. Uh, with that way, I can then inch my way towards um, what I conceptualize in my head into a, a image. The mid-journey uh, software, I start off with a text like space, age, desert, module, living habitation pod, and in the Arizona desert, frontal camera angle, and things like that. And then what it does is it gives us um, images. This is among many, many images. And it always comes in pairs because it's using the beta. So after me running this multiple times, I found this one on the left to be interesting as a good camera angle and a good atmosphere and good color lighting. So from there, I um, decided to evolve this. So as you can see through some of the evolutions, it starts to look like there's so many different versions and they're all doing different things. And this is where you slowly guide it towards what you're looking for. Some can be quite cool as well and goes in different directions. But um, for this particular one, I decided to go with a simple one that looks like it could be an Airbnb that you can simply rent and live in. So it's basically a selective process. Once you, you get the initial image that you like, you really take the time to evolve. Sometimes it takes me like five time, uh, five generations, which is like one of the least is super lucky if you do. And sometimes I do like 50 to 100 generations um, because I don't like any of the directions. And because it's, it gives you so few results, um, sometimes you could often find you have some elements you like from one and some elements you like from the other but it's never all together for you. And that's why I also use um, a lot of Photoshop. I take some elements I like from one and some elements I like from another and I merge it uh, manually. 
basically, yeah, if they can fix that in the AI to, to for us to be able to manually select those things, it would be better. But for now, this is like a workaround for me, just to use, you know, 50% of the AI image generation, 50% of your own manipulation. And that pretty much, yeah, sums up my uh, process of AI. Well, thank you so much, Tim, for sharing the process of designing with AI tools. And guys, I hope that was inspiring for you. We look forward to see your designs and we'll see you in the next videos.